Hello, everybody. I welcome to this video myself and the Soprano King, Hello, <laughs> Mr. Simon Bates. You may recognise him from videos such as Curved vs. Straight Soprano. Uh, but we are here to talk today about the two professional Yamaha Soprano saxophones. These are the nuts, right? They're, they're both fantastic saxophones, but we're going to get into it in more detail. There's the 875EX, which I'm modelling here. Don't worry, I won't be playing it. Simon will be. And the 82Z which Simon has. And there's a couple of variations on each, which we'll talk about later. But first things first, we're going to get let Simon loose so you can hear a good old run through of playing on the 82Z. Then we'll play the 875 and then we'll give you our thoughts and some of the tech details about how they vary. So, Mr. Bates, take it away. <laughs> There we go, those are the two back to back. Uh, you may have noticed, the more observant of you, that the 875EX we are playing with the curved neck, it comes with a straight one as well. Mm -hmm. You prefer the curved neck generally, don't you? I prefer the curved neck from the comfort point of view. Right. Um, I mean, I, I do uh, fiddle around a little bit with necks. Um, the, I've got the, uh, the original pre-EX Soprano, um, yep. and uh, it came with an M1 neck or M1R. Um, this one is a G2. A G, yeah, G2. Yes. Um, I do have a, a, a G neck that I use as well. Yeah. Um, so I kind of fiddle about a little bit with, with, with necks. Um, but um, I find it from a comfort position um, much better than a straight soprano. Yeah. Although I do find that if I use a straight neck, it probably is a little more open and easy blowing. Right. So really, it's, it's, it's a compromise um, rather than a, you know, sort of a major thing. I, th I yeah. think, you know, it, it's, it's however you feel with, um, with, with the situation. It's, yeah. you know, because straight, straight soprano, you kind of have to hold up and your arm gets a bit tired. And, oh, dear. Oh. What a sob story. Well, listen. <laughs> a sob story. Oh, hey. Uh, anyway. Oh, goodness. He's here all week. Um, the A2Z, although this is the straight version, they do an A2ZR because... They, this is all one piece, sorry, I should explain. The A2Z is a one piece saxophone. That means there's not a removable neck. Whereas on the 875, uh, the neck is removable and you can then use uh, the curved or the straight variation. So if you are someone who prefers a curved neck feel and, and or sound, there is an A2Z R which has that slightly curved neck. But just for the purposes of the video, this is the one we have with us today. Let's just say actually Simon then, Apart from the difference, obviously, in the one-piece versus two-piece, this is a slightly different alloy. The brass alloy is different. It's a bit lighter on the A2Z. It is, yeah. It's based on the old 62 Soprano mm -hmm. as well, isn't it? Um, but what do you feel from a playing point of view, just on today's demo? I know we can talk about your sax as well in a second. Well, well we can do. I mean, uh, j just to say, really, it was the Soprano that attracted me to Yamaha in the first place because mm. I played a Mark VI. Uh, nothing wrong with a Mark VI Soprano, but... They're a bit of an acquired taste in terms of, you know, where the, where the keys feel, fall and all that sort of thing. So I tended to treat the soprano saxophone as a completely different instrument. It's kind of like alto tenor saxophone and this thing called a soprano. Whereas the Yamahas, um, I feel you can treat like a saxophone. You can play them like a saxophone. They feel like a saxophone. The side keys are like a saxophone. Yeah. And that was what really attracted me to... Uh, to, to the Yamaha Sopranos, you know, they feel like any other saxophone with your hands slightly closer together. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the reasons also I use the curved neck because I can get more of a saxophonic feel. position and feel. Yeah. yeah. And so between these two today, in terms of our playing demo, and obviously you've been doing a bit of playing off camera, what are your feelings about, obviously they're, they're both great, so it's not better or worse. Yeah. How do you feel they differ if someone the, was looking at the choice? The, the, uh, the Z, the 82Z is definitely a little bit brighter. Right. Um, you know, I feel that you know, 
possibly because of the uh, the, the straight through neck. Um, the range is great on that as well. The, the, the top G's, it doesn't have a top G um, key. key, nor does this, um, although I think this one is available. I don't know if the yes. 82 no. is. The, so you can so get an EX. You can get HG. HG, yeah. Yeah. HG yeah, with, a, yeah. Yeah. with a high G, but you can't get the, the ATCZ right. Um, but the on, on the, uh, the 82, my fingering that I use on tenor was absolutely clear as a bell on that. Bit harder work on the uh, on, on the 875, but you know I can still get it fine, so yeah. th th there's not a lot of problem there. Um, your altissimo range probably on any soprano isn't going to go too much beyond G's and A's and that sort of thing. Um, anyway, or well, mine doesn't. Um, <laughs> I can get higher on tenor, I think, than I can on a soprano. A soprano. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. because, because <laughs> of the nature of the instrument, but yeah. it's the sound of the soprano for me that's important, and these these two instruments are both really vibrant, um, you know, sound like a soprano should, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and I, well, so we've mentioned this is maybe a little bit brighter, a little bit edgier, perhaps. I can see if someone was quite an aggressive sort of free jazz or just, you, you know, that kind of vibe. I know you could do the smoother stuff on it yeah. with the right setup, but it feels like it just wants to go. It's a bit of a party animal. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. maybe the 875, because I've sold a number of these, a uh, couple to very good classical players as well. Mm. It maybe has a little more refinement. Uh, refine, refinement is is absolutely the word I'd choose. Yes, right. it, I, I think it does have. Um, and, yeah, why, and why is that important on soprano, particular to soprano? It's, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, I think, well, look, the intonation is very important. and Both of these are, are, are pretty much spot on. Um, I guess... You know, if you're sitting in a saxophone quartet or that sort of thing, playing chamber music, um, you know, this is definitely the instrument for you. Mm. Bit of a grray area as to the, you know, the, the 82 Z. Of course, you can use that for, yeah. for, for those sort of things. But perhaps, as you say, that's a bit more kind of, yeah, I want to be heard. Having said that, you know, I, I, I had the choice. Well, I had the choice of using any soprano, and, and the, eight, the 875 is, is the one I, I picked. Curiously, I've still got the original. Model that, that pre EX, yeah, yeah. pre EX that that uh, make, you know that, that I fell in love with all that time ago. The other saxophones I've changed over the years to fit the the current models or, or thereabouts. Yeah. Um, whereas the the eight seven five, you know, I'm, I'm still really happy with the original one that I had right from day one yeah. as a Yamaha artist. So, yeah, I think with the soprano for me, they got it right straight away. Yeah. There are you know there are great changes that they brought in, but for me, you know the the uh, the changes that they have brought in, perhaps uh, things like the high G, which I'm not too bothered about, and uh, yeah. and others. But the key work is pretty much, you know, they got right from day one, which yeah. which I think is amazing, really. Well, they did a lot of work on that soprano and that whole custom range, along with Eugene Russo as well. They and, did, and yeah. others. And mm. so uh, I think just, you know, from my experience in sitting here and listening to you, there is a certain smoothness, perhaps, that the 875 offers that is there in the H2Z, but is, this, as I say, is a bit more of a rager in a way, in a mm. nice way. Um, and so perhaps if you're doing a bit of all round stuff, maybe the 875, but look, the, if you get a chance to try them both, that's the thing to do and, and see with your setup, your mouthpiece, how you play, the resistance you prefer. But also I was really excited when they did bring this H2Z out because it just gave another pro Yamaha option against the Selma, mm. against the Yanagasawa. And let's be honest, the main competition, from my point of view, is Yanagasawa on soprano. We don't sell many Selma sopranos uh, for various reasons. Um, but the sopranos, Yamaha, Yanagasawa. And I think between these two, Yamaha kind of... Definitely for me, yeah. Covered. I mean, the, yeah. The, I don't want it to be a Yamaha love-off, but... No, no, no. The, I mean, the, the, look, the, the silver-bodied um, Yanagasawa yes. is, is a lovely instrument. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, and it's, it's got a, a lot of vibrancy 8, and power. Pounds. Well, yeah, but, you know, for, for the money, I don't think you can beat either of these two. And, um, you know, from from the point of view of the way it feels, um, it's, you know, they, they, they are so comfortable to play. The intonation is spot on. You don't have to work very, very hard um, as you do with a lot of older instruments yeah. to, to, to tune it up. Um, you know, and, and yeah, of course, you know, Yamaha don't make a curved soprano uh, very deliberately because they, I'm sure they've experimented with it. Mm. Well, in fact, I know they have, but they found that intonation issues, uh, you know, mean that, that it's not as accurate uh, an instrument 
as they for would them, like. Uh, as they'd like it to be. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, that's the reason they've stuck with this. The, the, as I say, your, your curved neck is a compromise, but it's not a massive curve, is it? You know, no, so. no. But it I've just makes it a little curves. more, yeah, yeah it <laughs> makes it a little more comfortable. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, hopefully you've enjoyed uh, hearing us chat about it and also hearing the demonstrations. Uh, but Simon, if you wouldn't mind just blowing us out with the 875 EX. <laughs>